said to answer those for you. Nobody's on Zoom right now, but we'll leave it on just in case. Um, and my passion, um, the area that I do research in is eating disorders and body image concerns. So what I'm gonna do is pass around these syllabi. Um, if you looked before yesterday at the one on Blackboard, this is updated because I forget who did it. Shout out to whoever the student was who emailed me and was like, what about the academics and point down? And I was like, oh yeah, we don't have class that day. We did our schedule and uh, we should be good to get with this. All righty. And then what I am gonna do, and this is something I experimented with as one of my classes last semester, just because syllabus day can be so boring, <laughs> is I made a um, syllabus scavenger hunt, if you will. And so I'm gonna come around and break you guys into groups, and each group will have some questions to answer about the syllabus. I'll give you five, 10 minutes to find those. And then I will pull the syllabus up on the screen and go through the answer. So, you three can be group one. And y'all four back here can be group two. Um, let's see, what's the best way to do this? Maybe the three of y'all can be group three. I'm going to probably just go four groups, I'm realizing. Um, three of y'all can be group four. And then we all have two in group five. So you can drink your five. There we go. <laughs> so take a couple minutes with your uh, group members and go through the syllabus and find the answers to your question. Your questions. Uh, they're kind of in order by the syllabus. So, like, if you're group five, look on the last pages. If that makes sense. If you're group four, look on the first page. Um, so Oh, right. I think of you had a copy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <It's> all good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, while y'all answer those, I'm gonna go on a little scavenger hunt of my own because there's normally a like lectern I could put on the table and it's not here. So I'm gonna go see if it's that cool. <laughs> Okay, well, I thought we went for this room, but now the one for the other room is missing. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah. What's that? Oh, oh there's only one for her. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right. How are people doing? Who needs more time? Okay. Maybe a couple more minutes. While you guys head for the last day for all of the other groups, start. Um, all right, so group one, what's the best way to reach me? Mm -hmm. Cut some of the lights, so y'all can actually see up here. There we go. You got it. Yeah. I get my email here <laughs> uh, and on my computer. So I will, uh, you know, that's the best way to reach me. I try to be really good about my email. If you don't hear from me in like 24 to 48 hours, try emailing me again because it's possible it just got lost among like the academic spam again. Awesome. And how do you set up a meeting with me? Yeah. So those of you who haven't had me before, this link is pretty user friendly. So you just choose the amount of time you think you're going to need to meet with me. And then you choose a day. And then let's say tomorrow you're like, oh, 4 30 tomorrow works. And then it automatically populates to both of our calendars, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm also glad to meet with y'all before or after class. Um, but what I found is that when I have just office hours, 
in my office, no one comes. <laughs> so this is a much better way to get us rolling. All right, who is the author of your textbook? You got it. Okay, so this is the edition that I'm teaching out of. There is a newer one, but there's no used ones of that one yet. So I am trying to like save y'all money. Um, if you buy a different edition, just let me know and I'll just make sure I can get you chapter numbers that match up because sometimes I do reorder them. So uh, you can also buy the ebook. I have no problem with that. Whatever format works best for y'all. Uh, and honestly, whatever is most affordable. To be perfectly honest, <laughs> I know textbooks are not cheap. All righty, and what are the objectives? What's one of the objectives of this course? You got it. So this is a class that a lot of CJ majors take, um, and we're going to be thinking about how psychologists interact with the legal system and a, a whole variety of ways, ways that might surprise you. Um, and then try to gain appreciation for the way that psychology has informed how the criminal justice system works, um, develop skills to critique the authenticity of how things are portrayed in the media. Sometimes it's good, a lot of times not so much. Um, and then you're also going to do some service learning related to psych and the legal system, so get some first-hand experience. And where will the majority of the information for this course be posted? Yeah, not surprisingly. Those of you who've had me before are like, oh yeah, she puts everything on Blackboard. One of my students said that this morning. She was like, oh yeah, it's on Blackboard. <laughs> yeah, it's just easiest Then y'all can find it. I can find it. So there's a copy of your syllabus on Blackboard. That's actually the one I'm working off of and everything is going to be posted there. All right, group two. Uh, why am I recommending that everyone wear masks? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, as much as we'd love to say the pandemic is done, it's not. Um, there's still about a thousand people dying every day from COVID. Um, I myself, unfortunately, got it from like the one person, one of three people I don't mask around for Christmas. It's not fun. Um, and there is some. Um, Research coming out about the consequences of long COVID, particularly on the brain. So I'm like, oh, well, y'all don't have to deal with. So if you are able to mask, I really appreciate that. I recommend getting, and I think several of you already have, like a KN95 or N95. Um, to me, they just feel more secure. And also research is showing they're more effective. Um, and what should you do if you have any illness? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So if you're so sick, you like can't sit up, please don't try to zoom in. Uh, this class, none of my classes are like that important. Like you need to like zoom in from your hospital bed if that happens, right? But if you are just feeling yucky, but you're like, oh, I still wanna attend, just zoom in. And the Zoom really is for that. It's for things like, if you're sick or if you're traveling for sports and you can't you can zoom from the bus, you don't have to. Um, unfortunately, because of my generosity with offering the Zoom, some people have been taking advantage of it. I don't plan on taking it away or requiring you to like bring me notification, but Please don't put me in the situation where at the end of the last semester, only one person showed up in person to class and all went to Rob Zoom. Um, <laughs> it's just, you know, use it as you need it, if not plan to be here in person. Uh, and then what happens if I am sick? Yep, exactly. As long as I am willing uh, and able to get up <laughs> and talk, um, we'll do class every Zoom. So, because of when I tested positive for COVID, I started my J-term class on Zoom and then we moved over. So um, the only exception to that would be, again, if I'm so sick, I can't sit up right. Or if I just don't have a voice. That happened to me once a couple of years ago. And Zoom doesn't help if nothing comes out when I talk, right? So uh, we will roll from there. And who will record lectures and who shouldn't record lectures? Yay! 
Yeah, yeah. So in fact, this is getting recorded right now. So if anyone wants to review um, us going over the syllabus later, you'll be able to. What I do is I create a YouTube playlist and I link to that from Blackboard and then you'll be able to access all the videos for the class here. Yeah, actually your student handbook um, says you can't record without permission. And in this class, we're gonna be doing a lot of discussions and might bring up some really personal things for people and I want people to feel comfortable about that. I'll often pause the Zoom when we do the discussion so people feel comfortable opening up and it's not like out to the world. So same thing. Now, the exception is if you need to record for accessibility purposes, please just talk to me about that and we can work it out. And then what should you do if you're struggling with personal issues? Um, you can Yeah, yeah. Um, so even though I'm a clinical psychologist, I'm not licensed, so I couldn't technically be your therapist legally. Uh, and then B, there's strict guidelines within the APA ethics code, the American Psychological Association ethics code, saying that I cannot serve a dual role. So even if I was licensed, I couldn't be your professor and your counselor. But the counseling center is great, and we'll get more to them later in the syllabus. All right, thank you, group two. Group three, what's the date by which you need to set up a meeting with me? You got it. Uh, I'm just going ahead here. Yep. Yeah. So this is for a couple of reasons. One, so that y'all get to use to my Calendly system. Two, so I can get to know those of you that I haven't had before. And three, so that um, you can ask me any questions you have about the class that weren't clear after syllabus day. Yeah. Um, and then what format will the exams take for this class? Exactly. Yep. So there's no in-class exams. Everything in class is lecture and discussion and watching movies and things like that. Um, and then you do these short answer take home exams and there's only two. There's a midterm and a final. And then what is your major project for this course? Exactly, yeah. And I'll say that this can be really flexible um, depending on your interest. So yes, I have had people volunteer with like domestic violence shelters or things that seem very related. But I've also had someone who, she's a psych grad. She actually now works at uh, the Georgia Aquarium um, with like the seals and the dolphins. Like she kind of has everybody's dream job. Um, and when she took this course, she was interested in sort of human animal interaction. So she did her work at um, a city animal shelter, which is what we used to call the pound, right? And learned about the legal issues there. Um, I've had people volunteer, this is probably my favorite. This sounded really fun at Safety Town where like little elementary school kids go and learn about stuff. Uh, I'm able to provide information. I also fully acknowledge we're still in a pandemic and that it might be difficult to get these hours. So if you have previous experience volunteering and you'd like to use that, you can. Now the experience here is 10 hours over the course of the whole semester. So not 10 hours a week, just 10 hours. Um, and so I've had some people who just knock that out in like a Saturday, just go and they're 10 hours at one place and that's fine. But other people kind of break it up throughout the semester. So whatever works best for y'all. Alrighty, and what are the two papers you have as part of your major project? Exactly. So you're going to interview uh, and it can be someone from your site. Um, or if you find you don't know somebody else that you'd rather interview, that's fine too. But someone who has some connection to the law and can speak about psychology related to it. So we've had people talk to lawyers, their supervisors at their internship site, um, judges, parole officers, anyone you're interested in talking to. And then the other one is the paper for service learning, where you just relate your experience volunteering during those 10 hours to what we've been talking about in class. 
Neither of these are supposed to be really long, like two to three pages. Um, and they're really just an opportunity for y'all to get some points for what you did um, and get some experience, not only out in the field, but talking to somebody who's in that field every day. Alrighty, and then how will you present the major project for this course? Exactly. Yeah. So this is very brief, five minutes. There was one year I taught it that we literally we were over in SSL 111 and we just like sat in a circle and went around and that worked. Uh, but you're just essentially going to distill down your paper into a very brief presentation. And I do that because some people are not as good of writers. I want to make sure I give opportunity to receive credit, not just from writing, if that makes sense. All righty, group four, thank you, group three. What are the two ways that you can earn psychology experience credits? Okay, <laughs> yeah, and this is supposed to be extra credit, so I apologize. Yeah, yeah, so I'll just break that down. All right, so uh, you can participate in research studies. I know there are two students at least doing Psych 480 this semester. My lab will be putting up a project and then Dr. Arrow usually has a project or two as well. So you can do that to get extra credit. Or if you don't like being a guinea pig, no judgment, <laughs> you can do little summaries for extra credit as well. I also often, after, often offer extra credit if like a speaker comes to campus who's relevant to class material. Um, and then yes. <laughs> The question about late work policy was a little bit of a trick question, so I apologize. Um, I don't have a late policy. It's not in the syllabus because there's not one. Basically, you have till the end of the semester to get everything done. Now, do I recommend you wait on everything? Hell no, right? You're going to hate yourself if you do that. But you don't need to email me for an extension about it. Just get it in by the end of the semester. Now, there are some things that we're going to be doing in class um the in-class assignments um we'll circle back around to those in a minute um but uh even those if you miss class that day you do get a freebie or you can email me i'll send you the assignment and you can do it on your own so this is just something i have started doing during the pandemic and i'm just going to keep doing because you know what y'all have lives <laughs> y'all have real world things going on and stuff gets in the way and you know what, if I turn in something late, like a review that I have due for a journal, they take it, <laughs> right? Um, and so I'm replicating that experience for you all. All right, and then how many points total make up your grade for the class? Right, and... For those who might be like, that's a lot of points all at once, it's actually broken up. So uh, you have little assignments throughout the semester related to that service learning project that where you're gonna gain points. Now, especially for these, I recommend you try to stay on schedule just because these will help you to complete that project. But again, if you turn in your plan two days late, I'm not going to be like zero points. I just think that's silly. And I used to be that person. So I think I was silly in the past, to be honest. All righty. Um, what should you do if you need accommodations? Talk to you about the accommodations. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So if you are working with Crit, who has a new title, he's now the Director of Academic Support Services. Um, he will give you a paper, we will sign it, and we, at that time we discuss how those relate. Alrighty, and what are the names of the two full-time members of our counseling staff? Uh, exactly. So this is the contact info for them. Um, they're free. It's free. Now, there's also a whole bunch of interns who work with them as well that they supervise, so that gives you even more access to free counseling. Both April and Brandon are VWU alums, so they've been where y'all are, um, and I find that really helpful as well. At the same time, if for whatever reason the counseling center and you just don't vibe, I have a list of local resources I'm glad to share. 
All righty. Thank you, group four. Group five, when's your first assignment due for the class? Yep. Exactly. So that's just your plan. It's like a couple sentences, basically, for like where I'm thinking of volunteering, basically, and what type of thing I'd like to do. So giving you a couple of weeks to kind of wrap your head around that gets like a week and a half. All right. And when's the last day you can drop this or any course without receiving an automatic WF? Exactly. The 7th of April. So you've got some time. Now, if you want to drop a course and not have it show up at all on your transcript, you have until the 27th, which I believe is Friday. And when's your midterm due? You got it. Yeah. So again, that's take home. You'll have time over spring break. If you're a person who likes to work over break, if not, it's not too right when you get back from spring break. I'll try to have this updated um, and ready to work on within the first couple of weeks, both that and the final, uh, so that you can do it whenever. And which days don't we have class and why? Mark, uh, 14th and 18th at the spring break. Yeah, and I'm just realizing that's probably the 16th, not the 18th. So at least the day I messed up was uh, during spring break. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, again, I had missed academic symposium before, but it's fixed now. Uh, and then when is our exam period at the end of the semester? Exactly. And that's when you'll do those presentations about your service learning project. There's no in-class final. It's just another take-home one. All right, let me thank you all for doing that. Hopefully that was like a little more interesting than me just reading through it in a monotone, uh, trying to spice things up a little. Let me just circle back to some of the stuff I realized I should have had y'all talk about and I didn't. Um, when we have discussions, just uh, debate ideas, not people, uh, and be uh, an active person uh, during them. And please, please, please ask me any questions anytime throughout my lectures. Um, I like to clarify and make sure y'all know what's actually going on. Uh, some of the stuff we're gonna watch and read about is really disturbing, right? Like one of the videos we'll watch later in the semester is about someone who accused and got committed, <laughs> someone who did not perpetuate the crime, right? And it was partially, honestly, a racist issue. That's really disturbing for me to watch as a white woman. I can't imagine what that experience is like for people with different lived experiences for me, right? And I'm not purposely trying to make you uncomfortable, just trying to really relate these ideas. Um, some of these, especially if you've had family members or if you yourself have had experiences with the legal system, they're gonna bring you some stuff up, right? And you can feel free to mention that if you're comfortable. I ask that like no one take anything and like spread it like, oh, I heard that so-and-so said this in class. Um, but also I challenge you to like really relate stuff to the text that we're reading. If you can't come to class, you don't need to let me know. You can let me know if you want to. Um, but I know that jobs come up that sometimes you're having to take care of younger siblings, older family members. Um, just like take care of yourself, take care of them. I will take attendance throughout the semester. And that's basically just like, if you miss a week, say like two days in a row, you'll get an email from me. Like, are you okay? Do we need to send someone to your dorm room with medicine? <laughs> right? Like, are you alive? Um, so, uh, that is the main reason why I do it. And then academic affairs wants us to, for those reasons as well. Uh, and you will self-evaluate your own participation at the midterm and final points. And there's a rubric on here that we'll use for that. Um, yeah, I'll just take another quick minute to go over the service learning project in a little more detail. Um, and then we'll go around and do introductions. So your first assignment, as the group pointed out for us, is this plan to find a site. So again, a couple sentences about what type of organization you want to work with what steps you can take. So some of those steps might be Googling stuff in the area, it might be going over to Lighthouse and talking to Wesley and Engaged about connections they have, things along those lines. Then you'll actually give us about two weeks after that, uh, you'll give me the actual name of the site you're gonna work with and 
what you're going to do there, right? Then you will, a couple weeks after that, give me the questions you're thinking of asking your interviewee. Uh, and this is just so I can like give you suggestions. Like, like oh, did you think about asking them this um, to flesh it out a little more? And you can do this anyway. You can do it over email. You can like do Zoom. If you're volunteering with them anyway, you can sit down face to face, whatever works. Then uh, I think this is like right before spring break, you'll do a midterm site report where you just let me know, how's it going, <laughs> right? And at some point for some people, this is like, oh, I still haven't been able to start. And that's okay. Cause then you still have half the semester, right? To get those 10 hours in. Then you'll turn in that interview paper where you talk about how their experience relates to psych and the law and relate it to class. And then at the end of the semester, you'll turn in the paper where you reflect on your whole service learning, those 10 hours experience um, and how that relates to class. Then as I mentioned, we'll have that short presentation. You'll also turn in a log of your hours. This can be any format. Some people have just copy pasted it into Blackboard. Some people turn it in Excel. Some people turn in Word. Just showing me like on this date, I did this many hours. Boom. Basically just a way for me to give you credit for the hours that you got. I think that's everything I wanted to circle back around to. So before we go to introductions, what questions are remaining for y'all? Hopefully that was clear. Yes, Julia. So for the service project, could it be like, multiple places and you wanted to try to log in. Yeah, no, that's a good question. So yeah, if you, if you are like, well, I can only get five hours here, but I can get, you know, six hours over here or two hours over there, that's totally fine. Yep. You just then relate sort of all the sites. And it might be easier to get like one site to one part of class and another site to another part of class. Yeah, that's fine. Particularly, I know some of you are involved in like Greek organizations or other clubs that are going to do service learning projects anyway. So if you can relate those, go for it. And there are lots of, like, so interestingly, let me give you an example. So over J term for the day of service, one of the things they did was to plant trees at the future site of a domestic violence shelter. Um, and you might think, like, what does planting trees have to do with anything? Uh, but there are a lot of really interesting, like, intersectional issues in terms of, like, areas that are poorer, lower socioeconomic status, tend to have fewer trees. And then that contributes to hot spots where those areas are actually hotter in the summer. And then that contributes to all kinds of health issues and other things that can all sort of trickle down and relate. Um, so pretty much any place you volunteer, you're probably gonna be able to circle it back around, that's what I'm saying. Uh, something like Lynn Haven River now, right? If you're doing something with oysters, you can think about like, what are the legal implications of this? Things along those lines. Good question, other questions? Cool. All right. So let me write a little guide up here for y'all. Okay. So we'll do name. And that includes like if you have a nickname you prefer to be called, or like it has your first name, but you go by your middle name, you know, something like that. Uh, let me know so I know what you actually want to be called. Oh, sorry. I didn't want to write your pronouns, not my pronouns. Uh, so I'm she, her, for example. Um, and then your major, your class year, and then just something you're looking forward to. And it doesn't have to be in this class or in a class at all, uh, but just something over the next semester that's giving you some optimism some hope, something to look forward to. So like, I'll go first, I'm Dr. Myers. Um, my pronouns are she, her. I was a psychology major in college. My last year is like a billion, not really. <laughs> uh, and then what I'm looking forward to uh, is actually, um, my daughter has already planned her birthday party in her mind for June. Um, so that's making me really happy about her creativity. Um, and that's really something fun. All right, we'll start here. We'll go back down the road. 
uh, my name is Kevin Borsani, and I pretty much just live out in Canada. My major is like uh, a sophomore, and uh, we're going snowboarding in a couple weeks. So that's, that's right. Where do you feel for that around here? Uh, okay, okay. So, um, the Western part of the state. Cool. Uh, my name is Jennifer Nixon. I go by Jenna. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a double major in criminal justice and Hispanic studies and a double minor in sociology and psychology. I'm a senior and I'm um, looking forward to this class as a whole because my plan is to be a first psychology. Awesome. Um, my name is Amy. I'm a criminal social worker. I'm a teacher in psychology. I'm looking forward to graduating. And Going on and producing about all right. Like this is the first time I've had two trinities in class. I love it. All right. Um, you go ahead. Um, I'm a Kiela. My friend or sneaker. Um, my major is psychology. I'm a teacher. And something I want to do is have two things different for one on February 7th, and my daughter turns two in August. And my name is Susan. I'm kind of safe. My name is Susan. I'm a major in psychology. I have a minor in English. Um, I'm a senior. I graduated in December. And something I'm looking forward to is. I'm with you there some days for sure. <laughs> like there are some days last night was fun. We're like after my daughter gets to sleep around nine, I just walk across the hall to my bed and I'm like, this is nice. So I feel good. Um, <laughs> Completely understand. A lot of my students have talked about how their relationship with their sport changes over the course of college. So I completely understand. I'm <laughs> Okay, I was about to sit down and do something. I'm going to be talking. Sure, yeah. Um, I'm Elijah. I'm from the I'm a psych major, my third year. And um, I'm looking forward to having a good academic semester. Yes. Um, I'm Alina. I'm from the <laughs> um, I'm Adriana, my pronouns are she her. My major is director of the minor psychology and engineer. I'm looking forward to you. Nice. My name is Sadie. I'm a researcher. My major is psychology. Um, I'm a student status, and then I'm looking forward to my great picks. Um, I'm Haley, my pronouns are Steve, my major is accounting, I'm a minor in psychology. Um, I'm a doctor here, and today I'm looking forward to this. Nice. My name is Kayla, my pronouns are she, her. Uh, I'm a set major, theater minor. Uh, I'm another. Class of 24, and I look forward to the summer when it's not so cold. <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I'm Julia Petrovsky. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a psych major, but I'm looking to take up the criminal justice minor. Um, my class here, I'm a senior. Something I'm looking forward to um, 
I turned 21 on Valentine's Day and hopefully winning another national championship the softball team. <laughs> Awesome. Cool. All right. So normally we'll go the full time, but that's all I wanted to cover today. So I'll hang around up here in case anyone has any individual questions. Um, and I'll see you all on Thursday, same time, same place.